Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this Hot Zone Mercenaries Heroic Bounty Guide, I'm going to take a look at Nightbane in Blackrock Mountain. You need to complete Nightbane with Usera in your party in order to unlock Usera's equipment. And the Nightbane fight is a really weird one, because Nightbane is a protector and Nightbane becomes much more powerful when it's alone. Nightbane has two adds. Both of the adds are blue, one of them prevents you from dealing much damage with spells, the other one prevents you from dealing much damage with attacks. So depending on your team comp, you have to kill one of the adds first, then Nightbane, and then the other add. And you would kind of think that, hey, I want to bring in some fighters, because blue adds, I want to take those down. But actually, no, that's not what you want to bring. You actually want to bring casters. Because if you bring fighters, then the other ad that you're not dealing with is going to deal so much damage to those fighters that it's really going to become real, really a mess. I did do Night Pain with Dragons, actually, starting with Yulon, Sinestro, Nefarian. And yeah, it was doable, but it was... I cannot recommend it. However, I have three comps here that I can recommend for this one. First of all, by far the easiest and fastest way to deal with Night Pain is with Fire. I'm using Belinda with Lesser Water Elemental. Aaron Geddon with Mark of Conflagration, Ragnaros with Blazing Rune, Gigi with Blazing Band, and Antonidas with Cinder Core Staff. I actually didn't manage to open Usera yet, so the last slot is for Usera. Anyway, why do I bring Antonidas back from retirement? That's because I really want some casters. So I'm opening with Belinda Geddon Antonidas. I don't really care if I lose some or if I don't. I have Gigi in backup, so... Fire is just really fast at blasting through the ad and then blasting through Nightbane. And with this team composition, I'm taking no risks whatsoever so that I'm guaranteed to win. Another extremely solid approach to Nightbane is Holy, so I'm using Anduin with Harmonic Mallet, Cornelius with Shield of Dawn, and Velen with Tome of Inspiration. These are for the climb, but for the Nightbane fight, I'm bringing Anduin, Velen, and Cyrella. So Cyrella with Radiant Wand can reduce the incoming damage a little bit and help your characters out. On the bench I have Kuki with appetizers for some extra health, and then the final slot is meant for Usera. And while not as clean as the two others, this is also doable consistently with Shadow Team. I'm using Yashrash with Mark of Yashrash, Murgi with March of the Murlocs, and Kazagos with Wildwine for the climb, at least some parts of the climb. Then again, if you're meeting a lot of reds, a lot of blues, Kazagos, Volchin, and Sara can also be used during the climb. So Volchin has Ring of Haste, and Azara has Saladat, and the final slot is meant for Usera. In the Nightbane fight, I bring Walgin, Azara, Kasagus. I'm trying to keep Kasagus alive, I'm trying to not attack with golems, because if you attack with golems, then that's just going to result in healing. But sometimes Kasagus might die, taunt golems, even if you summon taunt golems all the time, sometimes it's not enough to keep Kasagus alive. I have had it go both ways, depending on what the AI has decided to do. But if Kasagus dies, you can bring in Yashuraj. Yashuraj is able to taunt up quite a lot. And finally, you're also able to bring in Murgi. And that should always get the job done. And this is what all three comps look like. In action. Alright. Fire team against Heroic Nightbane. Nightbane has plus 20, plus 20 and Windfury while alone. Whereas Mass Saber Messenger, your other characters have plus 20 spell resistance. And this one... After another character is attacked, restore 20 health to them. So you really don't want to attack on others until you kill this, or you don't want to use a lot of spells on others until you've killed this, and then you want to kill Nightbane and then the remaining add. So we're here with the fire team. I've even brought Antonidas back from retirement, because you're going to take some incoming damage here. So I expect to lose somebody, which means that Antonidas is here just to... Just to absorb some damage, potentially. Alright, worth coming in. I should actually have given that fire weakness already. Already first time. Well, be that as it may, we're going to stop that one. We're going to fireball. We're going to inferno. I should have given fire weakness on turn one, of course. Not a big deal as such, but small things matter. All right, and now that that one is gone, means that these are now vulnerable, and now we really, really, really want to kill this one first. So we're going to give that one a little bit of fire weakness, and we're going to blast in with some fireballs, and we're going to do some infernoing. 
The health difference is not that big. We have two blues, so should have rather easy time getting damage in through here. Also, Belinda is now going to be killed, which means that there's more space to bring bring more stuff in. In this case, bringing in the Gigi. So now we have three firecasters, and we're just going to be blasting. Blasting through the night bane. Might not have really needed Antonidas from retirement. Could have maybe just done it with Chishi. But with Antonidas it's it's super safe because you can afford some losses. Still bringing Chishi, still bringing Ragnars potentially from the bench. So just to make sure that there will not be anything that can that can possibly lose you the fight. And one more time with the feel and that's Heroic Knight Bane right there. Boom. Alright, Heroic Knight Bane with the Holy Team. So Knight Bane becomes big when it's alone. This one prevents you from dealing spell damage to others, and this one really makes attacks useless to others. So you have to pick and choose one, and then Nightbane. In this case, Holy, of course, we're killing this one first, and then Nightbane. So let's go. All damage to that one, and we have our Zyrella as well. Trying to prevent some of the damage, actually. So this makes attack to five higher than target attack, that means that I cannot prevent the damage from there, but I can prevent some damage from here. So, we're doing some damage prevention. While also dealing some damage. And if we can just stay alive, then everything is going to be really sweet, because we're going to be scaling up our holy damage all the time. So that one's attacking... That one's dealing Tiger Lightning. This one is the most dangerous one. That's the that's the biggest attacker right now. So we're just going to reduce the incoming damage from that one now. I know I'm not really dealing any damage here. That's fine. I just need to heal up. That's random, so it might not even hit Anduin. This time it actually did hit Anduin. Equalizing Strike, Smoldering Breath, Blessing of Protection, alright. We can do Penance, we can do Holy Blast, Holy Blast so that I get those heals. And Equalizing Strike again. There's no other good targets, so I might as well do that. The alternative was to just heal Anduin. I was thinking maybe getting some damage in there could be useful. As you can see, it doesn't affect the, affect the amount of damage coming in. Because the Equalizing Strike sets the attack. Again, it does the same. Alright. Well. We'll keep fighting. We'll keep reducing the incoming damage as we can. Here we go. Reduce the incoming damage. I'm taking some. But Holin always healing me up. So. No worries. Anduin can take this beating. And in worst case scenario, I still have Hollywood Salvation, I still have Flash Heal, so there's more ways to heal up. Equalizing Strike, Smoldering Breath, Blessing of Protection this time, okay, we do Penance, we do Holy Blast, I guess this time we're actually going to Flash Heal the Anduin a little bit. And this health is slowly falling down, so we want to give Anduin a bit of a boost now. Right, Mana Blink, Medley, Fury. Mana Blink means that next turn the damage is going to come in real quick, which is a bit of a problem. But we can do... I think we can do Luminance. Can we do Atonement already? We can do Atonement already. Doing Atonement is fine, because that means that this one won't be around anymore. Yes, this will be totally fine. That means that this one is going to be destroyed. 
And when that gets destroyed, then... There's no bonus. Now with no bonus, smoldering breath, 15 damage, 15, so there's 30 damage coming. And doing can live through 30 damage, quite alright. There's always the option to use Holy Word Salvation a little bit. I might do that. Use this turn to stabilize Anduin's health a little. Flash heal, salvation. So I have ample means to stabilize the health total. Mentally coming, alright. That's totally fine. We can Luminance there. Now we need to kill Nightbane before we kill the Templar. And we have quite a lot of additional holy damage at this point. Which means that... Yeah, that Templar is in for some rough times. Wee. <laughs> oh, the damage is just... Damage is just pouring in. And the Templar is dead and... That's how the holy squad... Beats Nightbane. Alright, Heroic Nightbane with the Shadow team. So Nightbane has plus 20 plus 20 wind for a while alone. So this one prevents your spells from really working unless it's killed. This one prevents attacks from really working unless it's killed. And this one doesn't want to be alone or must not be left alone. So we're going to kill this one first. We're not going to attack with any golems. Those are the things that we're here for. We're just going to make taunt golems and we're trying to... Well, initially, any, no, none of them will be alive. But we're trying to get some of them to stay alive at some point. So that's what we're working on here. More equalizing strikes. Alright, alright. So, at this point... Don't be Shadow Surge. We need the heals. We need the heals for Kasakus at this point. Well, let's go for the heals for Kasakus. 6 healing, plus 6 healing. Because Kasagus is the one who's taking, taking a beating here. Mana blink, breath, Vindicator's fury. Okay, at some point, at some point, this will stop attacking. It will always stop attacking at some point, and then, then Kasagus will get to breathe a sigh of relief. Which means that currently... This is still more damage, so we're still doing that. And I think we're doing a Shifting Tides there. And we're doing Golem. So we do need to get this one killed. Azara, of course, only the AoE ability heals Kasakus, so we're using the AoE ability every time we have a chance. But the others... Not as often. Equalizing Strike, Wingbeat, Medley, Windigator's Fury, all coming at zero speed. That's gonna be a little bit tough. So we get some heals in. But they are not enough and Kasagus falls. Well, that is awkward. I'm going to have to bring somebody. We're going to bring Yashrash in. Yashrash has shadow abilities. Yashrash has a one speed taunt. And the one speed taunt. Very fast taunt can help me withstand the assaults. Also, that gives Yashura some some damage reduction. So even the Yashura is red, it doesn't take too much damage from the blues. Just need to be able to overwhelm that one. That's what we're here for. Oh well, that one keep taunting up. Slowly the damage is getting there. Sometimes Kasagus doesn't even die. But, well, sometimes it does die. That one into shifting tides there. 
I'm strength of Yashraj again. Attacking is useless because of the Templar. Unless we were to kill Templar first, you have to choose one or the other. And they're coming in with zero speed attacks. Okay. But we also have a zero speed Vainglorious Rebuke here, which is going to kill the Mana Saber Messenger. And we also have zero speed. So we have the taunt, we have the damage. Boom. Now, suddenly, they have lost a fair bit of their power. Smoldering Breath, Vindicator's Fury. Alright, alright. Because of weakness. Shifting Tides. And the strength of Yashraj again. Getting some heals in. Getting some damage in. Working on the Night Pain. Wing Beat Medley. Don't an attack. It's not being going to be alive to do that. I suppose it may be. But this is this is starting to look pretty good already. So even with those attacks, and I'll have to just bring in Murky, which really isn't isn't the ideal mercenary for this. But we are wearing down the Nightbane. As a matter of fact, Nightbane is going to die right now. Indicator's Fury again. We might as well attack these Murlocs in. They don't really do anything. And attacking into the Templar is fine. So getting rid of the Night Pain. So it's just so we don't let the Templar have any any chance of a death blow here. And it's going to vindicate their fury again, but that really really is not working out. And Papau. Sometimes Kasagus doesn't die. And if your Kasagus doesn't die, then this is a little bit easier and cleaner. But even if your Kasagus dies, Shadow will just be able to overwhelm Nightbane. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members and Twitch subscribers who make all of these videos possible.